Joining us on the other side of the set, Aaron Ogunkei with a look at what's making headlines in the world's papers. Hello, Aaron. Um, our, your first story, our main headline here on Live from Paris, uh, the reaction to the ceasefire deal between Hamas and Israel. And some papers saying it'll be framed as a victory for both sides. Yeah, that's right. Well, the international press is pretty unanimous about this, saying that uh, this both sides are either both winners or both losers. Uh, I'll start with uh, the, the Times of Israel, which argues that Hamas and Benjamin Netanyahu are the winners of this mini-war. The paper says that the Israeli prime minister comes out victorious because the conflict leaves him safely ensconced in the prime minister's residence, while Hamas has prompted the opening of new fronts in the conflict, uh, with rockets fired not only from Gaza this time around, but also from Lebanon and even some missiles from Syria. Uh, for the Times of Israel, the losers, however, of course, are the citizens of both the Gaza Strip and Israel. Uh, British paper The Guardian had a similar analysis, saying that both sides are already expressing satisfaction uh, with the outcome, and this even though in big picture terms, nothing has changed. Uh, Hamas is still in charge in Gaza, and Israel has maintained its blockade there. Nonetheless, the paper says the conflict may be seen as a way for Hamas to discredit uh, its rivals under the Palestinian Authority for kind of cooperating with Israel, while for Benjamin Netanyahu, it takes the attention away from his corruption trials, and will it also may prevent the head of Israel's current opposition party from being able to form a government, which of course could lend Netanyahu kind of the political lifeline he's been looking for over the past two years. Yeah, Aaron, you mentioned the big picture not really changing, and that's a common refrain we're hearing that that the fighting may have stopped, but the underlying issues haven't been resolved. Yeah, and that is why the New York Times notes in today's paper that ceasefires can be both fragile and short-lived. It notes that past deals between Israel and Hamas have often fallen apart, even if they can offer small periods of calm, the time it takes for people in Gaza to kind of rebuild things, to reconstruct their lives, and to kind of try and find a more longer-term solution. Nonetheless, the paper notes that the bigger challenges, including a more thorough rehabilitation of Gaza and improving relations with Israel remain um, and have been the finding a solution to those problems have been elusive in the past. Well, looking at our other top story here at Live from Paris, the humanitarian situation in the Spanish North African enclave of Ceuta, and you found some striking photos. Yeah, that's right. I'll start with today's uh, edition of French Daily, Le Parisien, which focused on the image we he see here of a Spanish lifeguard and member of the Civil Guard in Spain saving a baby from drowning off of the coast. Now, for Le Parisien, this photo is really a symbol of the growing humanitarian crisis uh, that has seen thousands of migrants attempt to cross uh, the Moroccan border with the Spanish enclave, many of whom thousands have been sent back. Now, the mission to save the baby was complex, as the article points out, but luckily that baby survived. Uh, the, the civil servant there is, is quoted in this piece saying that he's lost count of the number of babies, mothers, fathers that he has saved over the coming days, not to mention the people that unfortunately have not survived. And that a striking, powerful image, but another one, just as empathetic, uh, one that you would think would be celebrated for the compassion in the photograph. This humanitarian worker has been harassed. Yeah, exactly. It's the Spanish media outlet um, Info Libre focused on this photo there of a Spanish, a 20-year-old Spanish Red Cross worker embracing a young Senegalese man who made it out safely uh, and, of course, is emotional, is crying. Uh, well, she was harassed by members of Spain's far-right Vox party for this photo, subjected to racist uh, vitriol. Um, so the hashtag on Twitter, thanks Luna, emerged in response with thousands of Spaniards thanking her for not remaining indifferent to the suffering of people and not celebrating the fact that people are dying or risking their lives at sea. And to finish, lest we forget, journalists are never perfect, but British papers are dominated by damning revelations about an infamous BBC interview with Princess Diana in 1995. Yeah, that's right. It's the cover of almost every single major British today, British paper today. I took the Daily Telegraph, which has, uh, again, the quote that most, uh, that most papers have taken, which is BBC fueled my mother's paranoia. That is because an inquiry in the UK led by a former Supreme court judge into Martin Bashir's infamous, like you say, BBC Panorama interview, found that he had engaged in deceitful behavior by essentially falsifying documents to persuade Princess Diana's brother uh, that the media were paying associates of the royal family to get uh, information. So he wanted to kind of get a more exclusive, uh, you know, blowout interview on his part. Uh, 
Some 23 million people watched the interview, which indeed kind of propulsed Martin Bashir, made him a star. Uh, the report also found that the BBC failed to adequately investigate his methods um, and fell short of its standards of integrity and transparency. The BBC, of course, has since apologized. Uh, but both Princes William and Harry kind of uh, make a direct link between that initial interview and the, the kind of paranoia that, that, that it... That it gave Princess Diana and her death. Uh, Bashir, for his part, insists that she would have committed to the interview anyway, and apparently the BBC has a handwritten letter from her part to that effect. All right. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. Aaron Ogunkeye with a look at what's making headlines. Time now for a quick break.